side, what, do, what does a foreign company need to focus on when they're exporting to the U.S.? Good manufacturing practices. GMPs, that is the, you know, the, this is a basic requirement um, that's critical for producing safe and wholesome foods. And when it comes to FDA, the GMP requirements are all spelled out in the Code of Federal Regulations. You just have to read them, and they literally would be hundreds, if not thousands, of pages of basically information about um, sanitation, uh, production requirements, employee requirements, everything that a food company would need to follow in order to produce a safe and wholesome food. HACCP, hazard analysis, critical control points, um, that is a food safety system that focuses on the prevention of hazards. Um, Europe, for example, has long required HACCP plans for companies, um, and the U.S. requires HACCP specifically, currently, for seafood and juice products because those are higher risk products. That's been a requirement for a number of years. We'll hear a little bit about the Food Safety Modernization Plan and how the new preventative control rule uh, will incorporate, in essence, HACCP like requirements for food companies. Low acid and canned food requirements. So if a product is low acid, acidified, thermally processed in a bottle, a can, a jar, a tetra pack, there are requirements that the co a company will need to follow, that the manufacturer will need to follow. Um, they'll need to obtain what's called a food canning establishment registration that's specific to that location, that site that is producing the low acid or acidified food. And then in addition, they'll need to submit what's called process filing, um, and, and they'll, be, they'll get an SID number, submission identifier. The process filing is in essence where you describe to FDA scientists how you make that product. They sit in their offices up here in College Park, they review what you've told them about how you produce that product, and they try and determine if that's going to be a safe product. Um, so that's uh, a, a can be a pretty tough requirement for some companies because they're just not used to the submission and the back and forth that takes place with FDA. And of course then once they have a process on file, they need to be following that because if FDA does come out and inspect, that's one of the, the things they will focus on. You've told us you're doing this, are you actually doing it? Labeling requirements, um, Anna will be speaking in detail about uh, labeling rules. Uh, you know, obviously there are very specific requirements for the front and side panels, the fact charts, the ingredient list, etc. Labeling, it's important to remember, also extends beyond what's on the product. FDA is out there constantly. They have teams that are out there looking at companies' websites. They consider labeling to be any marketing material, so a website, a brochure, that's an extension of what is literally printed on the label. We have a lot of foreign clients, particularly in the dietary supplement industry, who have a lot of difficulty when it comes to FDA because of the claims they make. A years and they've been recognized to do this or that, but it's not going to be necessarily recognized by FDA. Um, English, uh, you know, a lot of companies also, how many languages can I, what can I have on my label? The rule is, it has to appear in English, it can appear in other languages as well. There are some requirements to do that. And again, Anna will go into, I think, a little more detail on that. And then claims. Um, I mentioned earlier, there are four types of claims that FDA regulates, nutrient relative structure function and health. Some of you may be aware that there are new labeling requirements coming. The rule will be released uh, theoretically in March of 2016. Uh, once this rule is released, it will effectively mean that every food company that has any product in the United States will have to change their label. There will be a phase-in period, but as you can imagine, there are thousands and thousands of food products on our shelves. They will be getting new labels eventually, or have to put new labels on, to better reflect what Americans actually consume. So again, I think Anna touches on that briefly in her presentation. 
Ingredients, uh, another big issue, another thing companies often have difficulties with, um, you know, making sure that all of the ingredients they are using are grass, um, general, generally recognized as safe. Um, and again, we see a lot of companies who will say, well, this colorant or how I'm calling it is permitted in Europe. It may not be the same or allowed here. That's true with a lot of different uh, types of ingredients. Food facility registrations. Uh, food facility registration was first required in 2003 under the U.S. Bioterrorism Act, uh, and it is registration of a location somewhere on Earth that manufactures, processes, packs, or stores food for human or animal consumption. A lot of uh, companies around the world will say, how do I register my product? This is not a product, there is no food product registration with FDA. There is a facility registration, and in that registration, you indicate categories of food products that you deal with, that you produce. And an uh, 11 digit number is issued by FDA. That's a permanent number that a, a company keeps year in and year out. Um, and the main thing is if anything changes with the information that had been submitted, the name of the plant manager, the email address, a phone number, uh, or additional categories of food are being produced. The company is required to update their, re their registration within 60 days. The Food Safety Modernization Act, uh, when it came about in uh, January of 2011, one of the new requirements was for companies to have to renew their registration with FDA. So a company back in 2003, they may have registered for the first time, they got their 11 digit number. What happened between 2003 and 2011 is FDA's database, in essence, got bigger and got worse in the sense of quality. There were duplicates, quadruplicates, uh, there were companies out of Asia, one particular country I won't mention that misinformed their producers and said you register every time you do a shipment so there were thousands and thousands of extra registrations from one particular country uh, so with the food safety modernization act fda realized well this is an opportunity or congress when they passed the law realized this is an opportunity to clean up the database so now every two years every even year starting in 2012 between October 1st and December 31st, companies must renew their registration. Each year in 2012, some new data was required. Additional new data was required in 2014. Um, there will most likely be some additional data fields in 2016. We've gotten a pretty good idea of where FDA is moving with some new data requirements. Um, if a firm fails to renew their registration, and many do, what happens is FDA, several months later, purges their database. And so it just, they get eliminated from the database. If they don't realize that, they ship a product, it will end up being stopped, detained for lack of a registration number. The firm can then register. Here's some registration statistics. You can see 2012, um, you know, there were almost 450,000 food facilities uh, registered with FDA, both domestic and foreign. In 2014, that database after uh, the purge was more or less practically cut in half. It's crept back up now, I think, in foreign registrations. Uh, um, actually, it, it's probably around that number. Um, so, again, uh, that's just uh, uh, a result of companies having not renewed and FDA cleaning up their data. Uh, number three, the U.S. agent for FDA communications. Foreign facilities must designate a U.S. agent for FDA communications. This is someone who has to be physically here in the U.S., available 24-7, who acts as a communications link between the FDA and the foreign company. So if FDA has a particular question about a shipment or if they would like to schedule an inspection of a foreign factory, they reach out to the U.S. agent and expect the U.S. agent to help facilitate that inspection. 
uh, mentioned, Coley had mentioned in the introduction, you, uh, Registrar Corp serves as U.S. agents for a little over 11,000 food companies. So every week we receive notices of inspections. Uh, we know pretty much where FDA is going for the next six months just because of our client base. Uh, they'll go out and inspect, obviously, some of our clients, but, of course, they're inspecting companies that are not our clients as well. A new requirement under the Food Safety Modernization Act is that the U.S. agent is responsible for reinspection fees. And what I mean by this uh, is when FDA goes out and conducts an inspection, their first visit is free of charge. We pay for it as U.S. taxpayers. They'll travel to the foreign country, they'll conduct the inspection. If ultimately that company has a bad inspection and is classified as something called OAI or official action indicated, that firm is then, in FDA's eyes, eligible for a reinspection. And under the Food Safety Modernization Act, FDA is allowed to charge for that reinspection. It's 300, approximately three or three hundred five dollars per hour. Typically, you're looking at a 20 to 40 hour inspection, travel, writing reports, all of that's included in it. So you are potentially uh, talking many thousands of dollars. FDA realized that collecting that money from a foreign facility might be difficult, but collecting it from someone who is here in the U.S., i.e. us, Registrar Court, we serve as U.S. agents, would be a lot easier. Uh, so that is a new requirement that FDA has, a new power. They have thus far not issued any reinspection fees. Um, they're supposedly going to be putting out some guidance on that in the coming months. Prior notice, number two. So a company is registered, they're following GMPs, they have proper labeling. If they're low acid uh, canned food producer, they have their food canning establishment and SIDs on file. They've got their US agent, they're ready to ship. The next step prior to the shipment is to submit what's called a prior notice. This is a requirement that companies submit before each and every shipment of food or beverages to the US. Prior notice is in essence a process where you're telling FDA I am in Argentina, I'm sending a, a shipment to the U.S., it will go to this person, it's coming to this port of entry on this bill of lading and will arrive on this date. FDA takes all of that data, plugs it into the software that they've developed, their targeting software called PREDICT and other software programs, and then they will use their very limited resources to say, we've got 1,800 shipments coming in to Miami today, we can only we don't have enough people to look at them all. Let's go look at these six. Let's open these up and actually inspect them because we've determined that these are the highest risk shipments based on the type of product, based on the country, based on the company, perhaps based on the importer. And so they use the prior notice information to uh, maximize the use of their limited resources. New requirements, um, Edwin will touch on the Food Safety Modernization Act. Again, it was signed into law in January of 2011. The concept is uh, put more burden on U.S. importers to be responsible for the products they import. Placing that burden on U.S. importers uh, indirectly and, and directly in some of the requirements puts the focus out on the foreign suppliers. So if I'm going to bring in your food, I'm going to have to ask you to do certain things to make sure your food is safe uh, for distribution. The Modernization yeah. Act and mandates FDA to increase the number of inspections. Edwin will touch on that. Uh, for most foreign companies, the good news is FDA is way below the mandate. Um, they're nowhere near it. Um, but that is in there where they are supposed to get out there now and do a lot more foreign inspections. And as I mentioned, the uh, reinspection fees that they are able to charge. So those are the main sort of top 10 things. Again, GMPs, registration, prior notice, labeling, food canning establishment. Um, this, these are the things that, that foreign food companies need to focus on when they say, hey, I'm going to get started and start exporting to the U.S.